YouTube, it's Brian Phillips again, coming to you with a non-RC video, I know, again. Here's the thing, guys, for those of you that know what's going on in our lives, you know that we moved out here to the country, and we didn't move here for just RC airplanes, that was part of it, and that's why we built the beautiful runway, and you'll notice also, the beautiful runway was also part of that big huge thing which is our smallest, crappiest test truck at the company that I work for. And uh, so that truck is uh, over 40,000 pounds. And you can see those things on the back are 1,000 pound blocks. And for those of you that don't know what I do for a living, I work on industrial scales. I've mentioned it before. I've talked to people in some detail, but I don't talk about it a lot on the channel. So I am a technical guy, as you may have noticed. <laughs> I have another truck that would normally be parked here, except I have this big truck Four jobs tomorrow it's spring and truck scales need checked so that's part of my responsibility and my position so anyway there happens to be a big crane on the back of that thing which might just come in handy but I don't think so yet I don't think we're gonna need it but if we do we might and I've got it so that would be handy so it also helps to give you a size comparison what we've got here is this little um, baby a little baby tractor that's our <laughs> beautiful little baby and it's a 1025R, it's a 24.1 rated horsepower, uh, they call it 25 in the literature, and then 18 horsepower at the PTO. We've already been testing its limits with pretty much everything we've put on it. Uh, 48 inch forks are a little bit long for it, but that's okay, I still like it that way. Uh, we have this other piece of equipment back here that's hiding. You haven't seen the footage necessarily yet, but if you have, you're probably really bored. <laughs> this is a 54 inch drum mower, it's probably, again, a little bit big for that tractor and that's part of the reason why we've been putting water or in our case uh, washer fluid into the tires and it's also part of the reason why I built some counterweights for the front and that's all a culmination oh and then there was also that small bridge project and you're probably thinking gosh it's like it's all part of a plan <laughs> well it is part of the plan and part of the plan is to take hay on our property I've mentioned it in passing and so this stuff I put on Instagram the other day, just kind of a, you know, what is this stuff? What is this stuff? It's like three giant crates, it's unmarked. Well, it was marked, just you had to zoom in really close. These are the pieces of hay equipment that we have been working to get for three months and a half. Minimum. Yeah, and so now the manufacturer is shut down just like everything else on the planet because of COVID. Thank you, COVID. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. so much for that but anyway uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open these things up and see how awesome they are I'm hoping they're really awesome because we spent some good money on them but that being said they were very economical in terms of the value proposition and I think you guys are gonna see that too when you see them work although I'll probably slaughter all the methods <laughs> necessary to do it properly so I am just looking forward to all the comments uh, correcting me on what I've done wrong I can't wait for it uh, it's something you get, whether or not you ask for it as a YouTuber, and if you're dumb enough to put yourself on the internet and learning how to do things, then I suppose that's kind of par for the course. But without further ado, we wanted to show you our first, hopefully smart decision. Uh, we obviously worked with the manufacturer to size the equipment appropriately. The only thing the manufacturer didn't seem to get was the capacity of our lifting capabilities on this John Deere tractor are significantly lower than the package size. <laughs> they wanted to ship this all in one crate. Thank God I talked them out of it because there is no way we would have ever gotten it off the trailer, which again was just right on the cusp of getting it home safely in one piece. And we're very fortunate to have a warehouse from which to receive the whole receipts. I won't go into too many details because I'm not sure how things are gonna go, but I'm assuming it's gonna be awesome. Sorry for the wind in advance. That's what you get. So, we're going to start. There's three pieces. This is going to be the most exciting. This is going to be another one that it's, it's, I think is super exciting, but it kind of goes along with it, and then this will be the last. So, without further ado, I have an improperly sized impact. This is a 5 8 It should be a 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter. So, if I would have gotten the right size, then it would have probably been but I'm just gonna show you. This is the first one we wanted. First of all, this stuff has been halfway across the planet. It was built for me, and then it was shipped for us. 
directly to not my house. <laughs> but that was all part, part of the, of the show, life. guys. And I have been really impressed with the way things shipped. I can't believe how well they shipped. There has been one piece of damage on the whole packaging. And I think it was from customs. There's a hole here. But don't show them. I don't want them to see what's in there yet. There's a hole. I think it was an inspection hole. Oh. Is that what we call them? Inspection, inspection holes? Inspection holes. Well, it's pretty good going, So, I guess. the first bit of quality that I'm going to show you is the fact that this whole thing is bolted together. You know, it's kind of strange. I remember when we bought that Chinese drum mar. Hmm, <laughs> let me think back. Was that bolted together? Mm. I think it was no. barely together. Yeah. So, that's the first value proposition you're going to see. And no, I'm not going to bore you with undoing every one of these bolts. That would be ridiculous, and I never do stuff like that on my channel. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically undo the top, and then we'll show you what it looks like as it comes apart. And then we'll probably, and by the way, I should admit, in shipping this from halfway across the planet to where I am now, probably the most damage would have occurred on my portion of the trip, just in terms of like squishing and moving around the, the trueness of the boxes. This shared, I think, no room inside of a 40 foot container on its sea voyage. And uh, then it had its own private ride also from Chicago. So seriously, yep, I believe it was, I believe it was alone. And if you've never shipped anything to yourself internationally, freight, then get ready for fun. Don't. Well, we don't want to say don't just quite yet. <laughs> we might want them to. Goodness gracious, I think somebody ate a donut on top of here and then they spilled or it rained on it. I think it rained on it. It rained. Because these things are wrapped in this plastic wrap. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, uh, it catches the rain a little bit, but everything inside is stretch wrapped. That was one thing I was super impressed with. The manufacturer sent me pictures of everything as it was getting ready to ship. And then they sent pictures when they were passing through customs, leaving the state that they came from or the country they came from. And yeah. I was just really impressed with the communication, despite the 11 and a half hour difference. If you guys want to go to your calculator and figure out where it came from, be my guess. There's not too many places that can be halfway across the planet and be 11 and a half hours from Iowa. Mm -hmm. Ready, go. Put it in the <laughs> comments if you want. Some, if you know the answer, don't be bringing it up, people that know me personally, because I've already talked about this to those people. So, as you can see, reusable, well-built packaging, that's the first sign for success here, okay? I'm actually quite surprised at how well this thing was packed. We did some markings here and there, and then we went through and marked up and the pieces. Yep. Spray because painted just, the corners. Just in case we have to ship something back or we, you know, need this for some other project. It's a really nice container. My plans are possibly along the lines of a chicken coop for this sort of thing. Don't know yet. There's a lot of chickens. There we go. So, as you can see, so far so good. Nothing's falling apart yet. I've got two more bolts. And then what we'll do is we'll show you what's inside. And then we'll probably go ahead and take off the bottom bolt. Because it's going to get a little old watching me undo bolts, right? Camera crew? Mm, yeah. So camera crew, what did you think of the whole cross process? Was it fun? I learned more shipping this to us than like anything I've done in a while. Yeah, this was a learning experience for both of us. And it's going to be a learning experience as we get into marketing yeah. this product. And it's going to be a learning experience as we try to run it as a business. Oh no, I bust a nut! Look! What the heck? Wait, Wait it's only partially busted. That's okay. I mean, it was, it was kind of cool. There were parts of it that were interesting. Yeah, there were lots of parts that were interesting. 
one of my favorite parts was the fact that we were 11 and a half hours different in time. Yeah, so it was really, it's really cool, challenging. Especially when it came time for like crunch time, we were ready to make an order, and then all of a sudden we're like sending money, and the bank's involved, and I'm like, are we about to get ripped off? You know, yeah, can you look over this branch manager with me? And I drag her into all this stuff. And uh, so she took care of me. Oh, yeah, baby, look at that. It's so cool. Are they going to know what it is? Excited. Oh, oh, oh wow. Packaging is so nice, guys. I mean, it's crazy. I, usually an unboxing is like, wow, cardboard. Whoa, let's cut it. Oh, there it is. Or if it's from Banggood, hey, look. Look, hey. there's directions. They're spiral bound in this, color. Guys. Look at this, guys. Wow. Man, that looks so good. These guys stretch wrapped the entire thing. That's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. Desiccant packs. Desiccant packs. I don't even think they know what that is in China. No. That's crazy. The PTO shaft is sitting there. Ooh, it's got a clutch on it. Oh, it's got a clutch. Mm -hmm. So, guys, this is called the six arm rig. What this does is this goes around in a circle operated by the PTO shaft on the back of the tractor. It's powered and it will take the hay that's been cut and it will throw it and fling it and that's going to tead the hay. And then it will also make it into windrows by putting up a skirt on one side. And then when you throw it into the skirt, it's going to make a windrow. A windrow is what you go and pick up with the baler. So that's awesome. We're not going to go any further with this one. Let's go ahead and jump straight onto this one. Uh, everything is the same, so we will pause and come right back when we get the top off. Okay, so we got the tops undone, so you get to see the unveiling. Ooh, ah. And we get to see the unveiling. We have not seen this stuff. Oh, oh that is awesome. That is awesome. Just this tell is the, the people offset what it is. <laughs> inline tow package. What this is going to do is this going to allow us with a small tractor, it's going to allow us to hydraulically actuate the machine. So down here is where the three point's going to be. And then up here is where the baler is going to be. And when you run the hydraulics, then it's going to reposition where it draws behind you. So instead of being in line, it's going to draw out to the side like so. Which is gonna be really cool. I can't wait to see how this turns out and works. And uh, I was talking about desiccants. Looks like those desiccants have sucked up a little bit of water. Looks like this thing ran into the side here. Of minimal consequence there, obviously. It does look like these pins might be a little bit bigger than we're expecting. That looks like the next size up. So we'll have yeah. to get proper size pins. But that's not a, not a big deal. I knew there'd be some some stuff and yeah spiral bound manuals in color in a plastic bag that's that awesome. right there is more directions than the whole drum hour game on that's right just that page that you can see so that's what it's going to look like in the next one so i guess we'll go ahead and get the lid pulled on that i don't want any of this stuff to go away so i'm going to go ahead and probably flip this up here oh yeah that's so cool So guys, if you haven't figured it out, if you own a tractor, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't see. Tractors are expensive in and of themselves. If you can buy them used, great, good for you. I got mine used. Looks like we got that tire over there has no air in it. I'm assuming that that's probably not supposed to be that way. Over here, we do have have pressure in the tire. I wonder if they did that so it wouldn't roll as easy. Is this one here? Oh, it looks like there might not be air in that. Maybe they did that on purpose. Hmm. But they've got this nice lifting chain here. So that chain will allow you to lift it out of this crate if you wanted to. But obviously, you can take the sides down. And I'm just trying to gauge our next step because of that. It's just a spring storm. It's probably not going to amount to much, but uh, oh yes, look at this. We've got the tool kit that comes with it. There's a tool kit. There's the controllers. Oh, that's awesome. I'm excited to see that. Oh no, I shouldn't have poked a hole in that yet. And then you'll also notice there's a net wrap and this also does twine and you have to switch them over. 
uh, but there might be, I think they were saying it might be an hour and a half transition between uh, net wrap to go back to twine if you want to do twine. And uh, obviously net wrap is going to be a superior, uh, tighter package, it's going to be more weather resistant. And, uh, but some people are going to like twine, so it just depends on what your customers want. So probably do a little bit of runs of each, each year I'm guessing. But this guard here is going to be what, what helps with that. Oh, I can't wait to see this thing. So we're going to start taking off the sides, right? Sure. Looks like it rolls. <laughs> this way is the three point. So it goes this way. So this will be the side we have to take off first. And then uh, we'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like with the sides off. And true springtime fashion. Mother Nature is about ready to storm on us, so we will come right back. Okay, so we put the tops back on because we were afraid it was going to rain, and then we realized it's springtime in Iowa. So we came up with a different plan, which is to pull the side off. And then we can see it in all its glory. It's just really exciting, actually. <laughs> Yay. That was cool. what I was talking about with the flap. Yep. It's totally off the beat, which is a bummer. But that's not a big deal. Not a big deal. That is so cool. There's a lot of parts in there. Now, all this stuff is taken apart to where there's just a couple of bolts holding it together. In fact, we got to do one bolt here. And we're just going to tip it back. And then if the weather comes up on us, we can just tip it right back. So that's what we're going to do. We'll come right back. All right. So one of the perks of the job is a crane. <laughs> So this thing got a flat in transportation. I don't know why that is. I hope it's not because of some damage to the wheel. But what happened was one of the support legs broke through the bottom. It was nailed in position as was this. And so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to figure out how to fix that problem there. Um, and in doing so, I need to lift it up so I can get the pressure off the wheel. You could do this with a hydraulic jack, but why do that when you have a crane? <laughs> he said so he's gonna work out that piece that fell through there's just a nail that's loose in here see that loose nail and I gotta is... get it through this hole here so that's disappointing this one over here looks like just a nail as well so we're gonna try to lift it up on go back This is the tire. It was deflated. It's, whoops, sorry. Um, it's like totally off the rim here. So it was, it kind of sunk down through this. I don't know if that's because it all fell. Is there any damage on anything? I don't know. Hopefully not. I hope the but sidewall's not damaged, but it yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like it's just that leg. It's not caught anywhere else now. It's just that one leg that fell through. When that thing fell down, basically this cover got uh, bumped and then this knob was loose. So this is like a, some sort of a gearbox. And then this is the take up. That's what's gonna pick up the, the hay, which is pretty cool. There's a bunch of spare parts. We actually moved them into this box just because we have this beautiful mother nature that's working with us. So this other thing, this was the other spot where we evidently were kind of caught. This is more than likely a shipping support because if you look right here, it's actually on the three point mm. part. So I don't know if that's just like a temporary thing or if that's supposed to be on there all the time. 
And then there's the tools and the controller and they've got a work and a transport setting. See that? So you can latch that up. That's really cool. There's a latch there to keep that in the transport setting. And then as you can see, this wheel is not empty so they must not have I wonder if there there must have been like a collision or something ooh there's you see those nails though look at those nails oh. they'll go under the crane though camera crew those nails hopefully didn't pierce the tire and if they did I'm sure we can get another tire easy enough I don't see any damage to the tire no. at all so we're just gonna fight to get the air in there I mean that's not really the purpose of the video but man look at that sunset it's gorgeous I know it's super pretty this is what I was talking about, guys. This thing had popped up, and that might have popped up while we were screwing with it just now. But if you were doing this without the use of a crane, and you had air in there, all you'd have to do is basically just like roll it out. Mm -hmm. Take out those four nails. Uh, there might have been, no, there was just two, two, and two. And then you would just basically roll it forward or hook it to your tractor or pick it up with your tractor. Although these guards and things, you'd want to probably take those off. So I can't wait to take off this plastic, but we are going to get air in the tires so we can lay this down. And then, uh, did we have that piece still out, guys? No, it went in that big crate. Okay, too. well, we've got one that's got a caster on it that's going to go in place of there, and then we can roll it around. So we'll show you that when we get that in place next. We tried with air, and we didn't have success, so we're just going to do it the correct way now with some ether. We're just going to get a little bit in there. Not a lot. We don't want to blow up the tractor. Safety, safety, torch. <laughs> All right, guys, don't poop your pants. Okay, I didn't, I didn't do enough, evidently. See, there's some. Okay, so this is a control explosion. Are you filming? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to film anymore. <laughs> I don't know how this thing got on the beat, but I'm sure it was really safe. Whatever that person did was totally OSHA approved. <laughs> there was no flames involved at all, I promise, boss. Hey, look at that. It's on there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> It's on there. So now we can go ahead and let it back down, which we'll do right now. Okay, so I debated about showing this, but this is why I want you to see this. Because, I mean, I've gotten a lot of things shipped from overseas, <laughs> namely from China. And you don't see care like this, generally speaking. I'm not saying that they don't ever package stuff in black plastic bags or tape or not at all usually not sometimes it's like whatever shopping center that they went to last this is like wrapped i mean we sell this stuff at my company and uh they probably use like an entire roll so thank you we should start selling to them anyway okay so that's that that's the that's the correct piece okay look it's a locking caster for goodness sakes that's crazy that's awesome i'm so happy about that Okay, so now we basically make sure the crane's not going to fall, and we just throw it in quick. And then we bolt it back together, and then we put it on the ground, and we can safely handle it then. Okay. I'll probably be getting some quick-release pins for those things, mm. uh, because I don't want to have to use tools for this every time. Yeah. Although, if you think about it, it's going to be more of a seasonal thing. But this is this is the temporary support they use, guys. Look at that. That's crazy. That's got to be at least quarter inch thick. I mean, that's incredible. 
So I'm really happy about that. Let's put this back on the ground. The air in the tires, you know, it, it made it a trip of like 18,000 miles. So, or wait, how big is the planet? 25,000 miles around? No. Oh. So it probably went like 20,000 miles. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're gonna start up the machine and let that down. looks like obviously we got the tiller still on here because we've been working on a project with the tiller and uh, I don't think we're going to need the crane to take any of the other things out. Um, honestly the crane was a fluke anyway. We really didn't need the crane. It just made it a lot easier and convenient since it happened to be 12 feet away and was working. And uh, if you have access to a crane it might be handy. But in this case this thing looks really cool. I am super excited to get this thing unpacked. Um, I don't think we're probably gonna get it unpacked tonight, but the thing that's so nice is now I can move it, I can get it out of harm's way, because weather comes and goes in spring like that. And these two could stay closed if we wanted. Uh, the hydraulic offset inline tow package is gonna be kind of hard to move around just because it's heavier. Um, and we can do that with our tractor. It's still well within the lifting capacity of this 1025R. Um, and then this six arm rake is going to take quite a bit of assembly. So not sure if we're going to go through that, but we'll take a look and investigate the instructions are good on this thing. So we're going to look them over and get an idea of what needs to be done. Obviously what we had to do was just uh, kind of on the fly stuff and we've got everything palletized. That crate, by the way, was really heavy. So that being understood, I can move this thing. Did I already show them moving this thing by hand? Um, I don't think you actually moved it though. Yeah, I, you can move it but, by hand. Yep. It's not, it's not super easy to move, but it's, it's movable. Okay. Now go move the drum mower like that. Yeah, there ain't no way you can't yeah. move that thing. No, that's no. way easier. And the thing is, you got to remember, we're on a hard surface here. You know, if you've got this in storage for the season, then you're good. And uh, there isn't like a jack or anything on there, so you can't change the pitch or the angle or any of that. Um, but this is not on the three-point attachment points, okay? So you could actually roll up, use that there, and then attach it to your three-point by moving your three-point up and down. Like I said, we're going to have to get different pins. Uh, did come with linch pins. That's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And then I believe this is just a shipping mechanism. So we'll leave it on there for security as we're kind of moving things around in case we want to tip over. Um, but obviously, you've got hydraulics. You can move them up and down get it to the right point and uh, take care of things that way. So this is pretty cool. It's a well thought out machine. That's why I bought it. And uh, you guys might want to as well. So ask me about it in the comments below if you're curious. Obviously we are gonna show you running this thing. Like I said, it's gonna be somewhat comical because we're learning how to use all this stuff. But uh, this is gonna be really cool. And by the way, did you show them the hydraulics up here? <laughs> Look at this. Oh, that is so cool. Self-contained hydraulics on this unit. It's got its own. Look at that cylinder. That cylinder is like as big as the cylinder for my my tip mechanism on the John Deere tractor. And look, guys, it didn't come with some chintzy throwaway strap. It came with like a real chain. That's incredible. Yeah. I I looked at multiple brands when we were doing this. And by the way, can't get John Deere. 
can't get Case IH, you can't get any of those big brands, not stateside, you can't get uh, Vermeer. They don't make them. They don't no. make a mini baler, okay? So if you're looking for a mini baler for a mini application and you're in North America, you're gonna be looking for a while. Because there are some out there, uh, but they're really expensive. And this is better. So yeah. ask questions and I'll try my best to answer them. I watched, I searched, I looked. Multiple. I found a bunch of videos. I actually found some videos from Redlands. They were better than any of the other manufacturers. Multiple is an understatement of like how many of these things we looked at. Let's say the emails were in the thousands. Literally. Easily. Yeah, literally in the yes. thousands. And when we finally got ready to do this, we were ready to do it. And it <laughs> still took us a month and a half to do it. Yeah. So look at this finish, you guys. You guys it's see this. It's so nice. Look at the look at the valve control on this. I think they use all German hydraulics. What is this thing? And there's oh, been like Italian. That I'm might sure. be, that's for the net wrap. That might be oh. for a cutter arm adapter. Of course mm -hmm. they have instructions. Just look how nice the finish is though. I just, I'm floored by how nice look, this is. Look, the warning labels are in English. They're, yeah, they're in English. And that's one other reason. I had a complete sentence. To go with this company is because they speak English. Yeah. And other languages, but mm -hmm. I know they speak English because they've been speaking to me. Yep. There was a couple of times where we had some technical jargon that got mixed up, but it wasn't anything major. So this is the tools that come with it in this little pouch. Like it's actually a nice canvas labeled bag that has the tools that you show would them need. This. You gotta show them. What? Yeah. Jeez. Look at the eyelet for picking. That's crazy. That is awesome. That I was mean, the shipping like that was the shipping eyelet. Wow. I'm yeah, sorry, the, I interrupted your, I know. your thought. And you were telling them about the bag of yeah. tools? Yeah, it has the tools that you need. It's not just like a plastic bag. It's a nice canvas. There's your oh, all your goodness. manuals. Look at this, guys. That's They've got, crazy. oh, 12 and 14. There you go. And 15 and 13. So 12 through 15. It's got all the manuals. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. There's even more. Jeez. And look, not knuckle busters. I just... I wish that when you bought equipment, it was like this. Yeah. Good Look crazy. at this. They give you a snap ring tool. I don't even have one of those. I just used the wrong we tool did for the, the, other day. the other day. <laughs> so look at this. Double-ended box end wrenches. Those probably are for some tight spots. And the then... spring. Oh, that's like got all the little pockets. Got a rope. In there. I think that's a rope so you can release the roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what that's for, but I'm sure the instructions will say. Yep. Because the instructions are going to be good. But look, everything has a place, too. A little too. pocket. Yep. Whoa. Hardware. Hardware. I don't know if that's spare hardware, but if that's all the hardware we have, we do have a couple of boxes left. Now... But most of them say spare or whatever yep. for the twine and stuff. And you got to remember, guys, I could have ripped this out of, this, of the package without even lifting it out. So you could start with the instructions. Yep. Pet peeve number one. You got good instructions, and they're hidden at the bottom of the pallet. We once had that happen on a pool, an above ground pool, and we got to step 3,489. <laughs> you found the instructions. And a desk. Remember our office desk? Oh, yeah, the office desk. <laughs> Even the moving guys didn't know how Couldn't to take figure it apart. How to take it apart. And so they refused to do it, which saved us a few bucks on shipping. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, guys, look at this. They put cardboard and foam on the plastic. They were yeah. worried about the plastic screwing up the steel. That's three quarters of an inch thick. The PTO cover, we are saying this is one of the nicest like PTO covers that we've seen on all the equipment that we have. And we have John Deere equipment, guys. It's not like we have crappy the stuff. The finish is like it's so really nice. really high quality. Look yeah. at this. Spring loaded. Look. Toolless. To get down and look. Quick, easy access. Oh, that is awesome. Can you turn the light on? Thing I thing. think you can turn the flash on right there. Can I? Yes. Oh, ooh. ooh, yeah. Now, I don't know if this is lubed, but that sure looks lubed to me. Oh, did you see that? That's a guide. There's a guide there. That must be for one of the strings if you're doing twine. And then all this stuff. So this is the, the Jumbo uh, 1208N. There's different sizes, different widths of pickups. Screws in there. So there's not, a, it's nut zerts. Yes, nut zerts. Not blind nuts. I had somebody correct me on that the other day, but I'm right on this one. Look, the holes are 
they're slotted. Do you know why you do a slotted hole in manufacturing? Because it's not always proof? perfect. Because then you can have imperfections and they still work. That's what I said. <laughs> I was just saying how smart you are. <laughs> okay, let's show them inside of here. Oh, I'm already pulling covers. I haven't even had it for five minutes. No I'm kidding. We're already <laughs> taking it apart. Oh, there's even one more down here, guys. It's a little baby one, too. The instructions probably show you how to do this, too. Oh, yeah. Who needs instructions? Yeah, who needs instructions? We put a good drum over together. Oh, my goodness. That's come, awesome. Come around so you can see. See this? See how clean it is? Yeah. That's all been so tested nice. on. You can tell. Here's that last piece. Did that they so cool. send a video of testing it or just when they got it like Not all packaged thing. ready to go? They showed me using the hydraulic offset inline. You see this? It's got all the look, tension chain adjustment. See and this? It has a, look at that. But, the blind nut or the, the nuts are. Oh, yeah. It's on a swiveling piece so that it can align too. I finally found some rust. Look, a little bit right there. And it's on top of the paint, guys. It's not actually rusty. It's just from some other hole that's drilled, like Something a weep hole. Yeah. Chain tension adjustment. I just wiped a little bit of splatter off of that. Color coded. Look at this. There's a tensioner right there. Man, this is like really heavy. Good lordy. That's, that's crazy. I know. Look, self-lubricating. Look at this. There's a brush. That thing I found, that's protecting oh, wow. a hose. So this is going to shoot out lubricant and I it's saw lubricate the chains. Somewhere on what kind of oil it took. There was a sticker. Somewhere. Oh yeah. We're experts on oil. We on are. Living. We're super good at that. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Before you get totally lost. See, I'm going to have to remember to put all these stupid things well, back in. I, but I can't uh, not show them more now. Because well, I, I mean, you it. can't. Oh, look here. Worm gearbox oil. What is it? SAE 80 80-90. Sweet. Hey, we know all about that stuff. We have lots of it. That's a worm gearbox. We know how to make a big mess, mess out of it, too. Hey, that's not the stuff that you put on over the other side. Show them up here. Look. Hydraulic lines. That is so cool. I'm going to get this chain out of the way so we can show them under this. We're just used to opening everything and being like... Underwhelmed. Oh, great. That's broken. See the net wrap? This is a small net wrap. But that's going to be... That's going to be what we're using to wrap our product our hay. So we're going to do grass hay at first, but we might do alfalfa at some point. We just haven't, we haven't really committed to one way or the other. And we've already got picking and ejecting. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, we're learning a lot. We're learning a lot, guys. Here's another tine should not touch the ground. It has some clearance um, markings on there. So that you know. Yeah, you're being loud. The tines under there will pick up the hay as it's in the windrow, so those aren't gonna like run along the ground. They're gonna run and like pick and up. Springs, there are springs too if you do hit the ground. Yep. But that's true among all yep. different manufacturers. But it's listed for you, so it's not a guess as to what it's supposed to, where it's supposed to sit. I mostly want them to see the hydraulic system because the hydraulic system is sweet. Here, see if you can show from here. There's a hydraulic reservoir here, I believe. Here, show them right here. There's your hydraulic reservoir, I believe. Mm. Yeah. And then there's a little shut off right there. This is going to be a pretty complex piece of machine. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on. I remember there was this one moment in time where I was like, hmm, maybe I could just build one. Uh, yeah, no. I'm not going to do that. Definitely not. Yep, definitely not. Yep, yep. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh, that's hinged. Are you kidding me? Look at this. I hope this thing Come up here closer so they can see. <laughs> Holy cow. You're blinding me. I'm sorry. That's why I want you in front. See the connectors? Nice automotive style connectors. Quick decouples. It's loose right now. That's just crazy. There's so many different things going on here. Oh, I wonder if that's part of the tra like the transport versus work. Did it move? Did it put tension? Nope. 
Nope. It only dropped. So we were talking about that, that last. Down. Yep. Okay, let me trade this box here. Okay, so you see this, guys? There's a sensor here. There's our hydraulics. Hydraulic reservoir right here. Tells you what it uses. Here's a sensor. That's a proximity sensor, Hall effect sensor, to verify that the guards are in place, probably. No, there's something else that happens. I don't know what it is yet. Here's, here's one of those things, the protective hoses there. There's oil in there. Yep. You know, I can tell. I can see a bubble, bubble right there. You can see there's a little bit of remnant of oil there. This is this is cool to see all this stuff finally after all this time after these many many moons. So when this actuates, this Hall effect sensor is going to see this. So when all this mechanism works, it's going to pick up on that change in state. What is this here? Whoa, that's made in Denmark, whatever that is. That looks like some sort of uh, it goes to a solenoid here. That's really cool. So basically, when the pump this. I wonder if the pump is integral. I'm trying to figure out where the pump is exactly. I know there's a pump somewhere. A hydraulic pump. I haven't found it yet. I should know where this is, but I don't know where it is yet. But it looks like when this actuates, it makes that mechanical switch. There's pressure and then return. This is cool. I'm excited, guys. I can't wait to show you more, but it's just really well built. Like. Like my wonderful camera crew said, we're just so used to being let down when you get a piece of machinery. Oh, that's a little better. I don't want to blind you. Yeah, it is blinding, by the way. Sorry. That's so, good. I mean, I've never put this together or taken it apart, and I just did that in the dark by myself. Yeah. With one set of hands and not struggling. It's going to be harder when it's dirty, I bet. I just can't wait to see you guys. This is going to be so cool. And you haven't even seen the, the special options. And I have to run this control up to power from the machine. In our case, the machine is the 1025R. And so I had planned on basically running up and stealing power from this 12 volt jack right here. Hmm. Instead of going straight to the battery, I haven't decided yet how I want to do that. But I got a 12 volt jack and just make a little dongle here. Possibly even put a cup holder. Use a cup holder to make the adapter. You can stick the cup holder in there and that'll hold all your electronic connections. And then when you're done using this, you just put it all back on the machine. So this is the this is the wiring. Here, let's come up by light so they can see it. That is so cool. Look at that. Wow. Power on. Oh, this is really cool. It's like an actual fuse thing. Must be some like afterthought. Look at that. I'm gonna say that that streamer leaf looks like it's a German made streamer leaf because I remember working with a on a system in a distribution warehouse once and they had these multi conductor streamer leaves like that. It says skin top. I don't know, skin top is the brand then. So this is a wire that it comes with. It's got a lot. And then here's the Here's the plugs, weather resistant plugs. And of course they've got these ready to go straight onto the battery. Looks like they heated those with fire. You can tell because they're black. Got a little bit of soot on them. This is really high quality. Look at this. Auto, manual, door, net wrap, power on, power off. Fused right here so you don't have to search for it. Looks like just a regular standard automotive fuse. super excited to see this thing around. What do we got for a fuse? Looks like we've got a 20 amp fuse. Good lordy. I don't, that's kind of strange. 20 amp fuse seems a little much. But that's okay. Don't lick the ends, guys. <laughs> so much to take in. So much to take in. We spent a pretty good amount of money on this machine. And we are excited to see it run. I can't wait to share it with you guys. There is more coming. I know we've been blathering a lot. Hopefully you have that button with the two arrows on it. If you don't want to listen any longer, you just like press that until you get where you want to be. You're supposed to film that at the beginning. Oh, just announce the end. Sorry guys. <laughs> Maybe you can rewind and pretend I said it at the beginning. <laughs>
All right, thanks for watching, guys. We're going to show you this thing running in full force as soon as we possibly can. We're going to show you the drum mower cutting. We're going to show you the rake, raking, tedding, uh, making windrows. We're going to also show you this thing making bales. And then we're also going to show you the hydraulic inline offset option running. And as you know, we have a bridge that we have to get across. This is all designed within the parameters of the bridge. And the bridge was designed within the parameters of this. They are one and the same. If you need a bigger tractor at some point, the bigger tractor will handle this just fine. Um, all right, come back for more. That's all you get. No more soup. Yeah. Yeah. So we just wanted to show you what that bale looked like. Um, this is a, a mini round bale. And so as you can see, it's packed really, it's packed pretty dense. We have it set really heavy. So <laughs> it's about as heavy as I can carry. So it's probably 75 or 80 pounds. It might just be the, you know, size makes it feel a little bit bigger. But you can see these ones down on the ground are the first four that we got fully automatically and it's pretty awesome because they look really good and they're nice and dense and then these were the ones we were kind of waffling through figuring out exactly how to do it we had one proximity sensor that was giving us problems and then we had a linear actuator issue that we worked through on this brand new redlands jumbo 1208n so that's what we're using right now it's got a decent sized pickup and it makes a wide bale. I mean, this is this is a pretty good sized bale. And you can get them even bigger than that, which is kind of cool. But we love the way it works. We can set the density significantly less, but I just, I figure, why have more, you know, more rounds? It's just, so I kind of want to open one up for you, but we just put them away. So I don't really feel like doing that yet. And what we're going to do is, when we do our next cutting, now that we have all the machinery working, we're probably going to go ahead and do a video of just taking the hay start to finish. Probably not the whole field because I don't want you guys to see me roll down the hill and die in a <laughs> fireball. That'd be no fun for me at least. But um, anyway, that's all you get for tonight. It looks good. It's working great. It's really cool to have this thing working now. And I got a brand new 3,300 foot roll of net wrap in here. It's super easy to load. It's, I mean, the thing picks up great. Um, there's a little bit of miss at the very end and then occasionally like those we had just taken out of bales that we were rewrapping because like I said we've been working through the bugs and speaking of bugs mm -hmm. um, now that we have the bugs worked out we've had uh, was that four in a row without any problems mm -hmm. on a fully automatic setup and it's pretty cool let's show them over here this is uh, this is the controller that we're using right now it's got a power control for on and off it's got a door open it's got auto or manual and then net wrap and in our case when you're in auto mode it does everything you just drive until it's full and it's set by a proximity sensor here when the door bulges then it knows that it's full and that density setting is set by how far that proximity sensor was back and so what was happening is it was never reaching the designated density 
and therefore it never alarmed, and therefore it never set up a cut, and therefore pretty much the whole sequence wasn't working. So once we got that resolved, we were good. Um, beyond that, there's also, believe it or not, there's a Wi-Fi app, not Bluetooth, but Wi-Fi. And yes, you can do controls to move the linear actuator in and out. Uh, it has a bail counter, it has a location marker. It has all sorts of features that are just crazy. I didn't even know it existed when we got this machine. Um, but for now, we're just really enjoying it. It's got all fully self-contained hydraulics. It's got a safety lever here where you can lock it open. You can get in there if you need to drag something out of it, if you get a stick in there or something like that. Let's just show you what it looks like inside real quick. This is a very good piece of equipment. And we have our axles set to the narrow spacing. They can go out about another eight or 10 inches on either side. So this is what it looks like right after you're running. As you can see, proximity sensors all over the place. This is the one that sets your density. And uh, the net wrap function is largely controlled by this linear actuator. And they have a position sensor here. And then this is your cutter. So when it pulls it, it cuts. And the cutting blade is up here. So it cuts the netting. It's a very clean cut. Um, I've never seen so many spare parts come with a machine in my life. We got like an entire, almost like a pallet of spare parts with this equipment because we have the netting, uh, net wrap option, and then we also have the twine option. So if we want to have twine, we have to do a changeover and there's a bunch of components that have to be switched, regrettably. But I don't care because I'm not going to do that. The net wrap works so good, there's no reason. But it just looks super nice. I mean, it's dirty now because that's the way hay balers are going to be, but it's really a high quality piece of equipment and I had no idea what to expect coming out of India. Um, not to diminish the quality of stuff made in India at all. It's just a long ways away. So, and I know India is making some of the John Deere stuff nowadays. So they must be pretty good at it. And they're, I mean, everything is just really heavy duty on this, including the stand that they used for transport that was like three eighths of an inch steel tube. I mean, it's just crazy stuff like that. You just would never do that. We have the wrong PTO shaft on here. We ended up using a clutched PTO shaft that was supposed to be used for our inline offset hydraulic tow package, which will allow you to run this over like this. And there's one hydraulic cylinder that actuates this and that dictates where it goes. We wanted it to be nice and small. We also got this thing from a mom pop shop that helps us to kind of be a little bit easier putting on and off. And it's worked really nice. Um, what was that thing called? Do you remember? Um, oh, like an easy hit. It's like a quick hitch, but it's not a quick hitch. Yeah. And so it's more, it's more universal. And so we really like it, but it still makes it easier to get on and off because these stage, well, these class one, uh, three points are notoriously difficult. They're all pretty difficult, but the, the class ones, the machines are just big enough that you can't quite move them around when they get to this side. This thing's 1100 pounds. So the three point will not lift it off the ground all the way. But all you're doing is when you lift it off the ground just to make a tight turn and then you let it right back down and you let the rollers uh, the, the rollers take it. When you're on concrete, it does a little bit of hop when you make a sharp turn and you want to be in four wheel drive on a small machine. This is a 24.1 horsepower tractor with 18 at the PTO. So it's rated for 20, 21 or 24.1, but it's actually called a 25 horsepower tractor. So this has a Yonmore three cylinder diesel. Very popular uh, in the, the subcompact size class is those little Yonmar diesels. Really great engine, actually. Um, I love the way it runs. But the thing is, you're really using all of the capability here. I did run a wire back to the, uh, to the battery because that linear actuator takes about four amps. They have a 20 amp fuse in it. But just to be clear, if you want to, this also has a little cigarette adapter. And I originally ran it through the cigarette adapter. I read it through a couple of problems in that it's probably not rated for that size of circuit. It's probably a five amp circuit. So you're right on the edge. And so I said, forget it. So I did the tedious job of running it on a small tractor. It's horrible because there's a million things you got to route around. And what we did is we just put it into this, this stuff here, which is extremely sturdy. I can stand on top of it and it won't do anything to it. So the other thing is the baler does throw some debris up here. And so you got to kind of watch for that. 
The other thing is when you're done, best blow this thing out with a blower and get it clean, get it, you know, all the electronics are up under here. So it's actually sandwiched shut. There's a Wi-Fi CPU unit over here. It's uh, It's got an 802.11 uh, wireless antenna on it. And then all the controls go out to this side. And then I don't think there's any proximity sensors over there, but this has a self-oiling chain mechanism. So there's basically a reservoir about this size and it's round, it's actually off to the side. So the fill level's a little bit confusing, but that actually runs through to both sides and it, it keeps the chain oiled. And then there's about like, what, five or six grease zerks. So in uh, terms of yeah, maintenance, about... it's really a pretty small job compared to a full size baler, which might, you know, cost $200,000 if it's brand new and it's huge. I mean, that's a big baler. You're gonna get 2,000 plus pound bales out of it. This is gonna do a 65 pound bale, but let's show them this little area. So if you look at that flag over there, you can kind of see where the quality of grass changes. We we're about 15, 20 feet into that side which I intend to take all that for hay, but that was just the first cutting. We kind of went a little bit excessive on our paths this year, just knowing that we were gonna have to do this. And then we took all the way down this hill to show them where we took. This is what we yielded here. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 bales but they vary in size from about 60 pounds to about 100 pounds. We have one up there that's crazy dense. That one up there is like, it's like cigar tight. Know. There's a few I can pick up, so they're probably less than 60. <laughs> yeah, but that's our drum mower. And then this is the rake. We actually only minimally raked. Um, the drum mower makes a nice windrow. The problem is if you don't fluff it or tet it, which is just flipping the hay over, um, it will stay wet longer and if it rains in the middle then you have to sometimes flip it to get the water off of it or you'll mold in our case we had zero molding but we did kind of kill the grass that's why we have it up on this trailer so if you guys do this just remember you're going to compromise the grass if you leave it there for a couple of weeks so just keep some pallets or something and you can put a pallet down the pallet's going to kill the grass but it'll be easier to recover and then over here you can see this grass we cut it really short, I mean, because the bearing plate is what it rides on, this little 54 inch mower. And it's about that much cut height. And you don't really have any adjustment on a small tractor because it's everything the tractor can do to stay holding it. But this hill, this hill is the hill of death. So my path is going to expand a little bit, meaning where I cut with a zero turn just for you know our enjoyment. And then the lot lines right here, it goes actually through this wooded area and then jogs up to the road yep. in a straight line and then it goes down there and then it goes back to that second tree line if you guys can see and we're actually at the end of that tree line oh, is about where our lot ends and it, it follows a creek so a named creek this is just drainage it's that belongs to the neighbor and then ours is over there that one belongs to us which is where we built our bridge so anyway this whole project the culmination of this project has come in the last 24 hours and when i say culmination i mean the beginning of the hard work um, the hard work to date has been getting the thing to work and now the hard work is going to be to just actually take the hay and you can just see how steep this is here guys. So this is, you know, with that baler here, right, attached to the tractor, it's going to be tough. But if I have the inline offset, which is in this container here, then we could hypothetically, we could actually run it way away from me. So even if I'm on a hill but then you're gonna lose a lot of real estate because you have to be basically driving on the lot line, which these guys would be fine. Our neighbors don't care, but I don't wanna disrespect their property like that. So our plans are to take this. Um, we'll be better at it, we'll be faster, we'll be more consistent on the density, which means we're gonna have a more consistent count. Uh, and we are really excited about it. Part of the reason we decided to do this was for the laws, the regulations in our county, require the continued reclassification of land for agricultural use. And so as a result, we needed to actually use it for agricultural use. And so this helped to facilitate it with the lowest input cost. And I mean, we spent a pretty good amount of money on this equipment, but the thing is we spent a lot less than we would have on a plow or a planter or a 
Thank combine you. or a variety of different even if you went and got used 20 year old tractors which there's plenty of 20 year old tractors that work well we don't have an outbuilding to put a tractor in and work on we have no real mechanical means to do that i mean i i know my way around machinery but not tractors and vehicles like that so we're learning what we need to to do this and every other machine we've gotten we've had a huge steep learning curve it's it's kind of crazy actually how much we've learned in the last year isn't it yeah i mean we've gone from city folk for all <laughs> intents and purposes even though we both grew up in the country um not toward the end kind of, of stuff yeah i was gonna say we never really did this stuff so we were more like in town on the outskirts of town and now we're like full-on country and wooded lots with creeks and bridges and we love it but and mosquitoes and mosquitoes my camera crew is going to mutiny me here now <laughs> so anyway that's that's all you get for tonight guys this is this is oh that was a mosquito <laughs> gross this is um why we're here look at that guy gross. he got me he got me he got me Ugh. that's all you get youtube sorry bye hey youtube brian phillips here we spent the evening bailing again and uh, ran the mini baler, Redlands mini baler, 1208 jumbo. And we had a pretty good amount of production so far. There's a few more on the other side too, but we're just gonna run through and do a quick count. Um, we rewrapped any of the bales that were like really bad. We had a couple last night that kind of ejected early and then of course we got a few you see that barn swallow I don't know if that's gonna come into focus but that thing they're so annoying <laughs> anyway but you can see this is this is kind of the size and the density it's pretty dense this one here uh, wrapped it must have been on the hill because you can see how it kind of favored to one side so the consistency is not horrible but it's not as good as i was hoping we might be able to achieve and part of it is just the way that i wind rode as you can see i've pretty much cleaned it up this one here i can explain that um as the net wrap was feeding off you'll notice this one has a bunch and this one has very little well the very little is correct and this is incorrect <laughs> so i was having to kind of help the net wrap to go on straight and that helped to resolve a lot of my problems. But as I was learning how to do that, I figured out a few different ways to do it. And one of them was to just kind of depress my hand on this net wrap as it rolled off of the roll because it's so close to me on the tractor. And uh, anyway, that sort of worked. But it also kind of causes new problems uh, in certain ways because then, of course, you end up with a, occasionally you'll rip through. So we have one, two, so two four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 42. We have 42 here. I'll just take you down on this hill and you can see we got a little bit. So we're at 42 right now. Just a few spots that miss. And I think what it is is just like where the there's like bumps in certain spots, and so it makes it really hard for the pickup to get. And then some of these just aren't worth passing. There's just a little bit there. I could probably come back and re-rake this and make a couple of bales. So we were at 42 per four. So now we got 44, 46, 48, 50, 52. 52, 54, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, 50, 52, 48, and this hill turned out all right. I basically had to drive back and then drive back forward. And it worked. It's kind of hard on the equipment. It takes a little bit longer, but that baler works really good backward, actually. I had no idea. There's a little tractor. 
usually park it inside, but I'm having it picked up to look at something. Okay, so 56, 57. 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70, 1, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83. So we're 83. There's the rake. I know you guys have seen this. But that's just the yield from the front. So we're at 83. Then we have just a few more on the other side of the top of the hill. I still really like the way that thing looks. It'd be cool if, be cool if it was a little bigger, but man, if it was bigger, Everything costs more, the trailer costs more, the truck pulling it costs more, the fuel's higher, you know, you just burn through more of it. So we're 83, there's one over the crest of the hill and then the rest of them are to the right. So there's 84, 85, 86, 87, eight nine ninety so we have 90 rolls so 90 rolls from the front is a lot more than we expected but we also burned through a lot more rat because we had a lot of a lot of issues i need to mow the regular grass too and we have another three and a half acres in the back closer to probably 3.75 acres to do which is i think a little bit bigger than this so, and we only took a partial cutting this time because we mowed way back in preparation for all this dirt work. So, if we yielded about 90 uh, bales, and by the way, there's a varying density. There's a few that are pretty light and a few that are really heavy. I could probably make three bales out of them. So, it just depends on what I was trying to accomplish and if I was going up a hill or... You know, if I broke two bales to try to make one, I usually just kind of squeeze them both in there and make it work. But so far, I'm getting the hang of it. It's going to take a while. I'm thinking I'm thinking this season is going to be trial and error, and hopefully we'll get a customer that is, is willing to accept some variability in the quality. Or maybe we'll just grade these things and make rows that are, you know, like the best grade and then a row that's like the low grade and then there's the row that's just kind of like hey we can use this where you know we have some dirt work that we did and we just want to prevent wash out for a few days or whatever until the grass seed takes so not sure how i want to handle all that yet not even 100 percent sure of the storage and then a few of these like for instance like this one right here see how it's kind of squished that's because i was using the baler when i was going downhill it would eject and then I would just push it backward and sometimes they'd get a little bit of a squish. So I tried to round them off as I can and I was using the forks to move them around to park them. I wanted to finish off, but it just got so late. And then we had a, a little issue with the hydraulic leak on the on the, the John Deere. So they're coming to take a look at that. I oh, hope it's not anything major, but it is fortunately under warranty. So if it is something major, it's a good time for it to happen. So, but I, I love that little tractor. I kind of wish it was about double as heavy and about six inches wider wheelbase that can't tip over. <laughs> that would be perfect because then I could uh, I could do everything I wanted in the same footprint, but uh, I'd be able to keep from tipping a lot more. And they do sit a little bit higher. So, you know, relative to where the weight and the center of mass is. So I've done everything I can right now with, with the exception of getting, I think they wanted for the rear weights, I think these weights on the, the main wheels are about $800, $900 for the brackets and everything for 250 pound cast iron weights on both sides. So the wet wheels have helped a lot with that, but that would definitely be a serious consideration at this point. If I'm gonna be doing this, hey, it's just a lot easier on everything in terms of uh, protecting me from death, <laughs> but it's expensive and anytime you buy a piece of equipment like this especially a small tractor and you're not sure how long you're gonna have it 
you don't want to make huge investments like an SCV kit, a selective control valve for the back to have extra hydraulic circuit. So right now I'm in the process of trying to get some T's made so that I can hook up the hydraulic inline offset on that. But I need the baler to be working 100% because I'll be far enough away I can't reach it at that point. So, so much to come guys. The farm stuff is just kind of a, a nuance on this channel I know, but it's very important in our lives and it's strangely enjoyable. Um, I thought it was going to be a chore and it, and it is. There are aspects of it that's just totally chore-ish. But there's also aspects of it that are just extremely rewarding. And uh, there's nothing quite like coming home to uh, a finished project, you know, knowing that it's done. It's, it feels really good. And now I can start determining where the hay is going to grow. I can make my field a little bit bigger and then make the yard a little bit smaller. And then just kind of have my runway cleared uh, wide enough up here. I'll probably keep a, a pretty good swath of this. But we're not sure. It just kind of depends on how we split up the yard. And how much the production is in the back. If the production is what I expect it to be, we'll probably end up with, I'm guessing, about 130 bales back there. Maybe 150. Because that grass is way tall. It's probably chest, chest high. So if we get 150, 160 bales, that would be 250 bales total of these mini bales. So we'll see. Hopefully I can sell them for something. Alright guys, come back for more. There will be more updates as we go along this process. Thanks for watching. Brian Phillips, signing out.